Hey guys, just thought I'd come on here before I start today's recipe and just give you a little uh, preview to what's coming up. So as I've said before, I am posting my favorite vegan recipes and so I've got to include this one. Whenever I ask Rick what he would like me to make for dinner, this is always at the top of his list. Now, the issue I have in posting this is I don't measure, which is the case with most of my recipes, but I have started paying more attention to how much I'm putting in. However, on this one, I don't. I just sort of throw it together. So uh, I may have to put in some of the measurements after, which I do anyways during editing, but I won't necessarily be saying them when I'm introducing them to you. Uh, I'll edit it in later so that you've got the right amount. All right, so let's get started. So what are we going to need for today's recipe? My famous baked beans. Well, I keep beans in the freezer. And you can see I have four different kinds of beans here that I have prepared and frozen ahead of time. And I'm going to put in some of each of them. Now you can stick with the traditional um, brown bean or pinto bean or a romano bean. Any of those will do. I have some pinto beans, which will be the main part of the beans. I have some red kidney beans, some black beans, and chickpeas, which I don't put as many chickpeas in this recipe, but I do like to put a few in. Again, I'll let you know the amounts uh, when I put them in. Actually, I'll be posting it here, but I'll know after I put them in how much I've used. I also am going to use um, about half a medium to large onion chopped. It's about three quarters of a cup. Three to four cloves of garlic, minced. And this is an optional uh, ingredient. I have three field roast frankfurters left over because we were barbecuing or, uh, yeah, we were grilling hot dogs over the open fire on the weekend and we ended up with three left over. I'm going to put these in. These are optional. You don't need to do them, but we love them. And three is a lot, but we like them, so I'm putting them in. I've got about one tablespoon of Italian seasoning. For those of you that don't know what's in Italian seasoning, it is basically some dried vegetables, some oregano, some basil, and a little bit of salt. So you can, if you don't have Italian seasoning, you can put in uh, oregano, basil, about half of each, so two teaspoons of each. Um, and a pinch of salt. We also need a large can of no salt added tomatoes. This is a 796 mil. I'm using diced tomatoes. You can use diced, crushed, whole, whatever you want because you're going to put this in the blender and blend it till it's smooth. We want a nice, thick, creamy sauce. So don't just use the crushed tomatoes. If you buy crushed tomatoes, make sure you put them in the blender as well. It makes a big difference in the sauce. I'm also going to use about half a cup of maple syrup, about a quarter cup of Frank's red hot sauce, about a teaspoon of chili powder, and I'm going to put in a couple of dashes of liquid smoke. This gives it a nice smoky flavor. Now we're just going to start by heating about two teaspoons of oil. I have um, extra virgin olive oil here in a pan. Once it comes to a heat, you're going to put in your onion and we're going to saute the onion for a few minutes until it starts to turn translucent. Once your onion starts to turn translucent, you're going to add in your hot dogs if you're using them and you don't need to put them in now if you want to put them in later you can however I like to get a little bit of a brown on them I just think it adds that extra nice little flavor and you're also going to add in your garlic and make sure at this point that your heat is on somewhere between low medium and medium you don't want to burn your garlic and just stir, stir this around for a little bit just getting a little brown on those hot dogs. So those hot dogs have started to heat up. You can see they're 
brown. My onion's really translucent, but it's before garlic is burning. I'm going to add in my Italian seasoning. Stir that around. Once we get it all mixed in, I'm going to go right to the tomatoes. And they have been blended now, so it's a nice, smooth sauce. Pull the pour the whole thing in, and we're going to just stir that around, get everything mixed really nice, and start bringing it up in heat. We're over about a medium to low heat right now. You don't want to take it too hot, and just let it come to a slow simmer, nice and slowly. So now you can see it's nice and bubbly, and it's also starting to thicken. Tomatoes is really good for that. It's a great thickening agent. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my beans now. So here it is with the beans in it. I ended up adding uh, two cups of pinto beans, one cup of red kidney beans, one cup of black beans, and then about half a cup of the chickpea. So again, that is about four and a half cups of beans. Uh, you can see how thick it is. That's the way we like it. Four cups would probably be enough. If you want to add more, you could do that too. But um, this is about how much I use so that you've got the right consistency, the right, right amount of sauce to beans. And again, you don't need to use all those beans. That's just what I have in the freezer. And I always use what I have in the freezer. Um, but if you're buying beans, either frozen or in a can. You can go with, um, you know, whatever beans you like. So the, the more common ones are Romano beans, Pinto beans, brown beans. Those are all the more common ones. At this point, I've got it on a low heat, even though the beans are frozen. So keep it on a low heat. You're going to bring it back to a simmer. And while it's heating up, I'm going to throw in the maple syrup. That gives it a little bit of sweetness, mapley flavor, lovely. And the Frank's Red Hot Sauce. The one teaspoon of, or half a teaspoon, depends. This is also, this is an option. Uh, if you don't want it spicy, don't add that in. And I'm going to stir that all in before I add a couple of good shakes of the liquid smoke. And again, that smokiness just gives it sort of that barbecue baked bean flavor, just awesome. All right, now I'm just going to bring it back up to a simmer. Then you're going to turn it right down to low, cover it, and just let it simmer for as long as you can. The longer you simmer it, uh, the more flavors you're going to get throughout. So I would say at least an hour next day is awesome. After, simmer, after simmering for about an hour, we have a great, thick, sweet and spicy bowl of baked beans. We like to eat it as the main meal. And we just, on the side, have a beautiful, nice slice of Cobb's Rosemary and Sea Salt Focaccia. It's a great accompaniment. But you can also eat these beans over french fries or hash browns or even just as a side at your barbecue. Until next time, guys. Enjoy. Stay safe. Stay healthy.